funny, spelled German. Oh yeah, that's totally fine. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about me. So I live in North Carolina now. I grew up in Utah. Um, I have a two-year-old daughter and a husband, and we're out here for his PhD program. But luckily, I've been able to move wherever we need to move for his for his job. Um, in fact, our entire company is still fully fully remote. Um, Wander is a team of fifteen now, and we're distributed um, all around the world. Um, we even have an engineer in Nigeria. Um, also a boot camp grad. Um, but anyway, I'll tell you I'll tell you my story. So. Um, I, my dad is a technical product manager. He's been in tech since, um, since I was a little girl. And so I kind of grew up being exposed to things, but I could never, if you asked me to build a website or an app uh, from scratch, I, I would, I'd give you a blank, st blank stare. So, um, I decided to do, uh, the Bottega bootcamp. It was in 2017, 18-ish that I, yeah, it was 2017, 18, um, that I decided to do that. Um, and I loved how fast it was. I loved that I could um, skip ahead if I if I got a topic or if I need to go back, I could go back and review things. I just loved it. Um, and then I was lucky enough to find a really great job um, and have somebody find somebody to pay me a salary to make mistakes and really um, learn because your boot camp it's. If, if I were to put it in percentage terms, it's 5% of what you need to be a, a really productive engineer. It's just that, just enough to get to the point where somebody could take a chance on you, right? Um, so it's really important to, to keep going. The boot camp is not the, is the, finishing the boot camp is not the, the finish line. It's the, in the long term, it, it's the starting line. Um, so today I wanted to chat a little bit about um, or maybe I'll tell you the Wander story real fast. I'll give you a little bit of context. Um, so Wander is an interactive mapping platform for destinations um, used across the world um, to replace paper maps. Places like ski resorts, amusement parks, um, similar to a Canva. Um, what Canva does for marketing materials, we do for maps. So it's a really easy self-serve map building tool where you can build these really cool 3D maps and have them match the colors of your brand. And, and then these maps can go anywhere. You can put them on your website. Visitors can download them offline and use GPS, et cetera. Um, but we started, uh, we started in January. I started building prototypes after my daughter went to sleep at night. Um, but, um, and pitched the idea to uh, an investor and ended up raising some money and um, we just closed our seed round of, of $2 million, and now we have a much larger team and are doing lots of revenue, and, and we have a, now we have a six-person engineering team and um, a three-person product team, and um, it's, it's a lot of fun. We're, we're growing, and it's a whole bunch of fun. So, um, and in, uh, throughout this experience, I've worked with a lot of junior engineers. I myself has, you know, have done the boot camp thing and have been a junior engineer, and I've worked alongside as a junior engineer, as a senior engineer, and now I'm, I'm in a hiring role. And so I, I'm in a unique position to kind of share some things that I've learned. Um, and I've tried really hard to keep it concise um, and give you guys some things that I, I feel are really actionable as you're, as you're beginning your career, uh, preparing to begin your career in, as, a, as an engineer, or really anything, any any sort of role in a software company. This could be, um, some of you may end up being product managers. Um, I love, I love product. And having a technical background as a product manager, it uh, really does give you an edge. Um, you could be, um, QA is great, both automated and manual. If you wanna just do manual, um, those are great. Uh, UX is great. Um, being a scrum master is great, product owner. Um, being a product owner is great. Whatever whatever role you guys end up doing, um, end up pursuing, I, th I think these will apply. And so I've broken them up into four categories. Um, and well, three three of these categories are characteristics that, um, that I would encourage you guys to develop. Um, personal characteristics, team characteristics, 
So how you work as a team and then just engineer characteristics. What, what should you be um, trying to develop as an engineer? And then have some interview hacks that, um, that I think are gonna be helpful to at least some of you. Um, but let's start with personal characteristics. Um, a lot of people think that being an engineer is just sitting behind a computer and you're, you know, a lot of work is asynchronous and it is, but there's a lot of people work. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we're all just people. And the way you treat people and the way people feel when they work with you um, has a really big impact on, on your career. Um, people, people work with people they like. Um, and they, the way they, the way they talk about you and feel about you, and the way you make them feel about themselves, um, is a really, really big, uh, has a big influence. So, um, one of the personal characteristics um, I always look for, and I, I've, I've observed, help people, um, the most is building others. Right? Um, are you in your own head all day, thinking about what do other people think of me, or are you were, are you more focused on? How can I how can I build this person? How can I compliment this person? Maybe there's a maybe there's a young UX designer that's that's trying to you know that was just hired and is learning the product and you know you can you can sense that they're maybe uncomfortable, not as confident. Build them right. Build them. Help them. Take take time to help them understand the product. Um, give them compliments. Um, be their friend. Um, those type of things. Just be be more focused on on the people on your team than yourself, um, and that will people will want to work with you. Um, have a positive attitude. Um, this is a big one. Um, there, it's it's easy sometimes to be, especially depending on the dynamic between the product and engineering teams. It's easy to sometimes um, try to in in effort to under promise things to be negative. But having being the person that has a positive attitude, hey, we can figure this out. Hey, there's a bug. Okay, let's see. Let's just fix it. Let's everything's gonna be okay. Um, taking you know, if it's you that wrote the bug, take ownership and say you know, I'll go fix it. I'll if it's something that's that's affecting the company in a big way. Okay, I'll stay. I'll stay after and I'll I'll get it done. Um, if it's if it's reasonable, and then. Another one is be genuinely interested in the lives of those you work with. This is especially important on a remote team. Um, you don't have as much water cooler talk as, as maybe you would um, prior to the pandemic. Um, but ask people about their kids, ask people about their house projects, ask people about their vacations they're planning. And then next time you see them, ask about those things that they shared. Um, those relationships are really important. Um, and then another one, be confident without being arrogant. This is a skill. This is probably the most important one. Be confident um, and humble. Uh, be humble, but confident. And just don't be arrogant. Arrogant. Um, anyone, anyone can see through arrogance as a as a really big sign of weakness and insecurity. So be confident uh, without being arrogant. Okay, um, and then team characteristics. Um, so. So much of so much of your success uh, will be will be measured by how well your team performs, um, and so and these are most these are these are characteristics that managers really want to see. So if you're looking for raises, um, you know if you if you want to get to the point where you can ask for a raise, if you can maybe take on a team lead position someday, or um, these are the type of things that that are uh, that will help you get there. Um, Having the ability to under promise slightly and over deliver. You don't want to pass across the line to where you're going, you're going to be negative. But um, an example of this would be um, let's say the product team is you're in sprint planning and the product team is going over a story. And I don't know if you guys have gone through agile or how you, how, um, how product and engineering teams work together. And it depends on, depends on the company, um, whether you're doing, yeah, it depends. But let's say, let's say the product team um, is asking, so how long do you think this is going to take to do, right? Um, it's okay to say, I don't know, and to talk through it with your product team. Um, but it's, it's better to under promise and say, hey, this is going to take longer and then 
um, and then deliver early than, than it is to say, you know, get people's helps up, try to be the hero in the meeting. Oh yeah, we can get it done, you know, in two days. Under promise and over deliver. Um, and the more you do that, the more, uh, the more you will be perceived as somebody that's, um, that's dependable. Um, depend -a dependability and uh, predictability on a product team. Um, the, your head of product or product managers that you work for, uh, you work with, sorry, not for, um, kind of feels like that sometimes. Um, it shouldn't be that way, though. Um, you work together, not for a product. But um, so much of their job depends on predictability, knowing, okay, how long are things going to take so that we can tell marketing, we can tell sales, we can tell the executive team who can tell their investors when things are going to be done, right? Predictability is a huge, huge, um, oh. huge, huge part of, of any software company. And so, um, so being able to accurately predict and if you're going to be off, you want to be off saying, oh, this is going to take longer than it actually did. That's how you want to be off. You don't want to be off the other way. Ideally, you work as closely to, to accuracy as you can. Um, but if you want to ever be an engineering manager or um, team lead, like that's one of the, that's one of the metrics you're going to be, you're going to be, um, that's, that's one of the things that they're going to track about you um, in making that decision is, can you accurately predict along your team, uh, your team's velocity is the word they use. Um, and then another one is find ways to make your manager happy, right? Fix that bug, you know, that nobody wants to fix. Do the mundane task. I remember when I was a, an engineer, we had so many little bugs. We were dealing with a, you know, we were dealing with, we were reporting over something from, um, from, I wasn't Angular to React. It was some old, I can't remember. But anyway, we were taking this legacy, somewhat legacy code and shifting it over. But there were a bunch of bugs that we needed to fix in that legacy project um, because we didn't want to take the time to totally port it over. And so um, it just felt worthless to go in and fix those bugs because we knew we were going to replace it, but we needed to fix the bugs before we took the time to totally replace it. So no one else wanted to fix bugs in there. And so I just volunteered. It's like, okay, I can fix bugs. I can go do that. And at the end of the year, I actually won an award for fixing the most bugs in the company. And it was awesome. Um, but that's how I could add value. Even without being a, you know, a super experienced engineer, I could, I could go add value. So go find ways that, that you can add value. Um, if somebody, you know, if they, I, another thing they had me do, they, they threw me some big features too, but I remember they needed somebody to do HTML email templates, you know, and it's like, okay, I can do those. Um, and I was, you know, I was enthusiastic about doing those things. Um, and so anyway, find, find, find ways to make your manager happy and, and to do the things that no one else wants to do. That's within your, it's within your capabilities, but also stretch yourself. Um, but remember the predictability, um, is, is key. Um, Oh, another thing that um, I found increases my confidence in engineers, product managers, is, is when I don't have to ask them for an update on things throughout the week in between our check-in meetings. If they'll send me an update, like, towards the end of the day, because um, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not in stand-up all the time, well... If we if we did have stand up in the morning, it depends on how your team does. But if you if you don't have stand up in the morning, and um, it's nice to have stand up in the morning. But if you send send your manager a quick update whenever whenever it's relevant, like hey, this is what I got done today. Uh, these are the things. Um, this is what I'm going to work on on tomorrow. Um, if you do if you have really really structured stand ups, then that's not really. And if everyone that's relevant that needs to be in the you know, if whoever you would send that update to is in standup, that wouldn't be relevant. But um, your manager doesn't want to have to check in and, and see how things are going. Um, being proactive about ke keeping everybody updated um, is a great way to do that. And then, um, oh yeah, and then I already mentioned, do the mundane work no one else wants to do. Um, and and when you're when you're not a junior engineer anymore, or you're not the most junior engineer anymore. 
help the people that are either new to the project, um, junior on the team in, in the product, um, and then always help always help junior engineers and help people onboard quickly and, and get up to speed uh, when you have new people join the team. Um, and then engineer characteristics. So what makes a really good engineer? Like take aside all of the all of the soft skills and the team tactics and and all that. Um, as an engineer, like what takes an engineer? Uh, I've been able to see, you know, some people. You can take a five year a dev with five years experience. You can take three people with five years experience, and chances are, like it's they're not even going to be really comparable. You know. It depends less on how many years that you're in that you've been an engineer, and more about um, more about how you've spent those years. Um, I've seen I've worked with I've worked with engineers that have two years experience that can that can write code around five year devs with five years of experience. Um, in the sense of decision making and architecture and just code output in both ways. Um, because that's that's really what um, that's really what distinguishes a senior engineer from a junior engineer is a senior engineer has seen a lot more mistakes made. They've seen a lot more projects, right? They've uh, they've made a lot of mistakes. They've had the reason engineer senior engineers make so much is because you know that for the last 10, 15 years, someone else has paid for them to make learn from by making big mistakes, right? And you just hope that you know you're you're mitigating risk by hiring somebody that has has already made those those big mistakes and so um and junior engineers they can output just as much code as a senior engineer sometimes they even more right um but the role of the roles are different right um senior engineers are there to make sure that architecture patterns are are, fo are followed and 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 that conventions are followed and, and things are in place um but anyway um one thing that one thing that these engineers that i've observed that learn faster than like everybody else it seems like they ask why a lot um not just what you're going to come across a lot of questions like okay how should i how should i set up this the component composition for this feature should i break up should i build a component that you know a modal component and like how fine grained should I should I break up these components? Or um, I think that I think that a schema for this this type of a schema uh, would work for for this for this new uh, new these new tables that we need to add for this feature. Um, it's easy to ask just what like okay what should I do? Um, but r the really great engineers ask why right? They ask what. And then if you have a really great mentor, they'll ask you why you thought why you think you should do something a certain way. And they'll talk you through that. But if they just say what, you know, that's great. It's your job to ask why. Why, why aren't we doing this? Um, ask why you aren't doing some. Sometimes it's even more valuable to ask why aren't we doing it this way? Because that means that you're thinking of your own solution, right? Why isn't my solution right? Like, why is this going to be? Go down the rabbit holes and th then just ask ask if you're on the right track. And they'll there it's their job, it's your senior engineer's job to course correct you. You don't need to know the right answer, but you do need to make decisions. Now make decisions and then just verify if they're right or not. But don't wait for your senior engineer to make every decision for you. But make sure you verify um, before you get down too many, you know, uh, bad bad rabbit holes. Um, Oh, another small tip. Um, I I hope for all of you guys' sake that you get to work closely with a senior engineer. I would say um, when you're looking for your first job, um, and I'll talk about this in one of the interview hacks, but ask about who you're going to be working with. Like, will you be able to sit next to, you know, maybe virtually or in person? Um, Will you be able to sit next to a senior engineer? Like how how much access will you have to a senior engineer every day? Um, that that you know is is invested in your growth and and development. Um, so oh and, and so one thing with you know assuming you have this person that is is doing your pull request your PR reviews 
Um, and you guys, if you haven't already, will learn about pull requests and, and how Git strategies and, and all of that. Don't worry about knowing what this is, but um, when they when they reviewed your review your code changes that you're going to push into the project that you're hoping to push in the project, and um, that has your tasks in it, the bugs you're fixing, the features you're building, whatever. When you open a pull request to merge it into the big project, the big code, you know that um, that people are actually using, um, ask to observe PR reviews say, hey, can I just watch over your shoulder? And when you find something, will you talk me through why, why you're putting a comment here asking me to change? Because oftentimes, you know, a senior engineer will just go through, make comments, and, and you, it's just not as efficient to, as it is to actually go through your code with a senior engineer and have them critique you and, again, tell you why. Um, so always ask why and, and you're, you should see opportunities to go through and review code with a senior engineer, especially your code, because you understand what's going on because you wrote it. Um, most of the, like 95% of the code base that you're working in, you won't have any clue what's going on when you first get this first job, and that's okay. So it's really important to have um, the opportunity for devs to review your code because you understand what's going on. So you can understand what decisions were made and why, and then they can help you understand why maybe your decisions were wrong. Um, so that you can, you can start to make better decisions. Um, oh, test like nobody's business. Um, depending on the company, uh, the, depending on the company you, you join, um, chances are, I mean, if you're, if you're at a really, really big company or even a mid-sized company, you'll have a QA team um, but you don't want any bugs to, you don't want any bugs to, to be caught by QA. It's your job to test the code you write. Um, that's, that's something that I don't think a lot of, um, a lot of schools emphasize is you manually test, manually test your code. Unless you're, unless, you know, depending on the company, you may do more test driven development and, and things, but, um, even still, like you have to test your test your code that's um that's behind tests even um because there's no such thing as a test that catches every case um and you you under you should understand where the weaknesses are or where the uh, where the potential weaknesses are in your code better than anyone else so test like nobody's business before you push anything be meticulous about um anytime you make a change um and and observe observe and ask questions about um about how your how your senior engineers uh guard against pushing human error bugs so many so many bugs are pushed when you know you you mess up your git commands or you oh i, I had a formatting change i forgot to save a file before i added all all these changes to a commit like all of those things should be avoided by a really good workflow. So absorb, uh, you know, observe workflows, senior engineer workflows and ask them, say, hey, be really transparent. Say, oh, I've been messing up on my Git commands and I've pushed some code that I didn't check before. And, you know, um, just just be be really meticulous about testing. And your goal should be to, to never, uh, never push, never push a bug. Um, it'll happen, but, but hold yourself to a high standard. Um, oh, and then here's another thing. Something I, this is a personal thing that I love about certain engineers. Um, it is so helpful to have engineers that are willing to put their product hat on and their business hat on and understand the why behind a feature that they're being asked to build. Um, let me give you an example. We are right now with Wander, we are building, we're building an analytics dashboard for our, for our maps. Um, so every map publisher will be able to see things like um, how many map, some stuff as simple as uh, how many maps, how many map loads, where are these map loads happening? Um, where are people coming from when they load these maps, referral URL and things like that. Um, and what, what markers are, clicked the most and categories, et cetera. Um, but let's say you're being asked to build something like that. What I would hope engineers would, would ask is, okay, so 
what are people going to use these metrics for? Like what, what type of people are going to be looking at this? Like what's their job title in the organization? And what, what impact is this going to have on the company? Like, is this, and I, as a product, product person come back and I, I tell you, I get to geek out because that's my job as a product person. I love telling you about that because that's the whole, that's uh, the product person's whole job is, uh, is validating and, and figuring out why we build features and, and predicting the impact. Um, so anyway, so ha having that as an engineer, asking those questions and having a bigger picture will, will help you catch, um, read in between the lines. A lot of times, you know, product to dev handoff is what is what we call it. And um, sometimes there's stuff missing that can be caught if engineers look past product just a little bit or go into their world a little bit and say, okay, um, why, why are we building this? Like, who's going to be using this? I've had so many times I've had, um, and if you want to be an engineering manager, that is a skill. Like you need to be able to put your product hat on and collaborate with product because product's going to come to you and say, okay, what are the implications of this with our current, um, our current, you know, architecture? And you can say, oh, you think you want to do this, but if we just made this little tweak, it would be more flexible. And I think you also, do we also want to do this? Do we want to allow this? And product may be thinking that that was just this really difficult thing that they, and they wanted to add a feature, that feature, like, you know, six months from now, but you, you can tell them, oh, do you want to do this? Because it would be, it add a point or two to, to just build this into the schema if you want to do this, right? And then you can go back and forth and decide. So having um, having product managers that understand engineering and having engineers that are willing to go through the effort to, to understand product and the why behind a feature is, is incredibly helpful. Um, and so just putting in that effort. Um, and then, oh, here's some interview hacks. So, um, and this is a common theme across everyone I, everyone I talk to that has ever hired engineers. Um, it, the difference between engineers that are passionate about what they do and engineers that aren't, the output and the productivity is like, is so different, right? So people are looking for, for people that are passionate about, about something about engineering. Um, and, you know, engineers are so different. It's, there's not just one thing to be passionate about with engineering. Um, one of my engineers is, is so passionate about refactoring, addressing tech debt, optimizing, making things faster and cleaner. We have a lot of engineers that are really passionate about that. I personally am passionate about building new features. Like I love seeing a, a beautiful new feature come out and have it be a great user experience and, and seeing, seeing people use it. And, and I, so that's, that's what I love. Um, there, there are different, you know, some people are really passionate about architecture and, um, and building components that are, you know, a component library that's really flexible, whatever it is. Um, it's okay if you don't know it right now, but, um, but finding, finding something that you can be passionate about, even now at this early stage and finding opportunities to convey that passion in your, in your interviews, um, a couple, a couple practical ways to kind of signal passion in an interview, um, talk about the projects you're building on the side, um, talk about, you know, something you're building and, you know, everything you needed to build that you couldn't find in your boot camp. Like Bottega didn't teach you everything you need, needed to build this side project you're working on. So talk about how you went and you taught yourself to, to get the project finished. That's, those are all signals that, okay, you can make it in the real world. If you can go figure stuff out um, and you're passionate enough to go even be working on a side project that you're passionate about and spending time to, to learn that stuff, great signals. Um, let's see. Oh, um, find, find someone online. This is one idea. This is an idea. Um, find someone online that is, that is a, a super geek about your stack that you want. I don't know if you guys are doing React, Angular, Vue, whatever. Um, 
but let's say go find somebody online, YouTube, whatever, that's, that's a react, uh, react guru that posts videos, tutorials, and principle react architecture principles and, and go, go learn, do some tutorials from them and then name drop them in interviews. Say, you know, I was, I, I, I really agree with, I really agree with this guy on, on LinkedIn and that he talked about this principle and I implemented into this project and it, and, you know, just um, showing signals that you are like on your own time, you are learning and like, this is what you love. That's, those are some of the biggest, biggest keys. Um, and if, if you don't have something like that, that you love, go find one, just go find, just spend, spend your spare time, spend your spare time uh, just exploring the world of code and you'll, you'll stumble upon something that you're passionate about. And if you don't, then maybe engineering isn't for you and that's okay. Um, but you need to find something about this, this career that you're really passionate about, something that fills your bucket. Um, oh, the other thing, another, um, this is kind of an engineering characteristic too, but be confident in your ability to learn anything. Um, in an interview, if somebody says, well, have you ever done, have you ever, have you ever done deep linking or have you ever done anything? Do you know what query params are? Or what's what are what's your favorite state management library? Or you know whatever. Um, so if you don't know what a state management library is, go and say, I I don't know what a state management library is, but um, but I'm confident I can learn it. I can learn. I'll I'll go read. You know, over the weekend I'll go I'll go do an eight hour course on state management and I'll come back to you. Um, and you don't, maybe you don't want to go that hard, but, um, if you want to guarantee getting a job, not guarantee, but if you want to really, um, escalate your, your, uh, chances to get a job, if you can show that kind of passion, you'll get a job. Um, oh, that's another, that reminds me of another thing. Uh, this isn't an interview hack. This is just a, a tip for being a junior engineer in your first six months of being an engineer, you, it's almost going to feel like you're learning a foreign language when you're on all these meetings with different engineers um, and product. And like, I didn't know what, what a point system was and like, what, what were these Fibonacci numbers people were using to point, you know, rate stories and, and, you know, things like state management, query params, um, uh, event bubble, bubbling events, or, inheritance you know object inheritance and i'm like oh i so what i did is i i would actually keep a little notebook with me through all of our meetings and i would write down words and phrases that i didn't know or topics that i didn't i didn't totally understand and at night i would go study them i would spend an hour every night before bed and i would i would look up these words um and eventually you know i I, I learned really quickly and I was able to contribute and contribute and participate in conversations and know what the heck was going on. It took a while, but we got there. Um, so yeah, write down phrases you don't know. It really is like learning another language. Um, another thing, when someone asks you, uh, do you have any questions for me in this interview, in, in your interviews? Um, some really, really impressive questions this is what these are my you can write these down um you can ask who are the engineers that i'll be working with and can you tell me a little that i would be working with you could say well if you want to be super confident um who i would be working with um, and tell me a little bit about them um what kind of learning opportunities uh, do you, do junior engineers have in in this company have you seen um yeah well will, will this be a good Will I be able to learn? And and saying in your interviews, my my, you know, acknowledging that hey, my my education is really just starting, and I'm here to learn. And acknowledging that, and saying hey, the number one thing for me is learning. Um, and then here's a really cool question: if you, but only say this if you mean it, okay? But um, this one this one gets people like me excited. Um, like if I heard this in an interview. Like, okay, um, will I be able to earn the chance to work on high impact features that affect, that have an effect on the success of the organization? Like that is, that's a big question. Like, will I, like, 
you know what that says? That says, I want to make an impact. Like I want to find a job where I'm like the code I write equals more business success. Like that's, that's what that, um, that's what that communicates. Oh, people will eat that up, but you have to mean it because you'll be able to tell and you don't want to lie. Can but if, if that's that something that's, yeah, for sure. Um, and you can rephrase it. I would rephrase it actually, but, um, will I have the chance? Will I, okay. I'll just read it how I wrote it. It doesn't, it's kind of choppy, but will I be able to earn the chance to work on high impact features that affect the success of the organization? Um, rephrased, will I have the chance to work on features, high value features or really meaningful features that, will I have a chance to work on meaningful projects that affect the, that have a high, high impact on the success of the organization? Something in that theme, right? Saying, I, will I, will, will I have the chance to contribute in ways that affect the company in, in a substantial way? Um, that's, those are, those are really, those are really awesome, awesome questions. Um, that's all I have for tonight. I, I would love to take questions. Um, any, if anyone has questions, wants to learn, learn more about anything that I could be helpful for. Um, I don't know how much time we have left, but. Um, we have uh, 18 minutes, but I'm sure if some of others wanted to stay on afterward, that, that shouldn't be an issue. Um, first of all, thank you again, AJ. Very, very, very enlightening. And I hope you guys are all taking notes like me. Um, you know, I can't speak upon how, like you said, getting to know your coworkers, building that communication and caring about them more than you care about yourself is so successful in your career. You know, thank you for actually hitting upon that because I think that's something some people uh, don't realize. Um, I do kind of have a, a, a question, uh, not a question, but can you um, go through your time in the program and how uh, your experience at the beginning and then some uh, tough spots you hit and how you over overcame those um, throughout the program? Yeah, for sure. Um, I remember there were a couple units where I ran into bugs where, um, cause you know how when you're setting up your environment for different units, like you have different libraries you have to install and there was something with my computer and I'm, I'm still kind of a command line noob when it comes to when it comes to like file system manipulation, I, I didn't, I didn't pay enough attention in there. That's always been a weakness of mine that I've wanted to readdress. Um, but I've been able to kind of work around that by asking for help a lot. Um, a couple of my engineers are just wizards. And so they, they've helped me when I was back in the code, but, um, but I, I remember running into a bunch of library you know, circular dependency detected and, um, you know, command not found. And just, I remember no one in Bottega could really, really um, could figure it out. The guy that could figure it out potentially was like out of the office. And so I just kind of had to sit there and watch everybody else. And I felt like I was getting behind and um, it was really stressful, but um but I mean, if you just keep going, it works out. Um, and some some units, you're not going to totally grasp. Um, luckily, you know, a lot of the units build on each other, so you don't want to drop one. But um, but sometimes you have to get you have to understand a you know unit four a little better to really understand unit two to give give an example. So just keep going, and things things start to piece together. It's like a puzzle. It's not a it's not a pyramid, it's a puzzle that you're building. Like this, this understanding of code and engineering and um, it's a puzzle. So um, if you're having a hard time placing one piece, okay, don't forget about it. And if it's that unit that you're working on, don't, you know, but, but uh, remember that there are more pieces and when you put more pieces in place, you'll, it'll make more sense where that, that first one goes. 
um, where that one goes that you're having a hard time with. So um, yeah, I, it's, it's hard. It is such a learning curve. Oh, it, even I had a somewhat technical background, not really kind of, um, and it was still really difficult. So I just keep going, keep building the puzzle. Awesome, thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? I don't really have a question, um, AJ, but I, I want to know what is the most rewarding part of being an engineer for you? Oh, okay. Um, I I love being able to build something out of nothing. That has been so cool. And um, I could talk also about the the family benefits. Um, having something. So I have a two year old. I've been able to be home and working with her and uh, or not working with her. Um, but, but, you know, and a lot of what you do with code is asynchronous. So, yeah, yeah. um, and so you can, I think it's really, it's really flexible for, for family. And, um, I also really love that you, as an engineer, you do something you've never done before. Like every day you're learning something new every day. Um, it doesn't matter how, how senior of an engineer, like you Google every day. You know, um, I like that aspect too. I like the challenge, and that's this. Yeah, this, it feels it seems very challenging. I hate monotony to death. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's no monotony here. I can yeah. tell. <laughs> that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm excited for you. Yeah. Um, study techniques. I heard. I saw a study techniques one. Um, study techniques code. I study techniques just code. Just work on projects. Just spin up spin up a new project every day and and build something that solves a problem i have another one yeah um so when you're interviewing or even just applying as a junior engineer um like i've noticed because i'm coming towards the end of our program um a lot of the job postings have languages that i don't know but i'll know most of their stack um, and I'll, mm. let's just say I don't know one thing in their stack. I'm hesitant to apply. So oh, if I, if apply. I, yes. And then, so just being confident that I can learn and that I will learn that language or that whatever it is in that stack that I do not know, do you truly think that that's enough in the interview? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You could, honestly, you could apply. If you did your full program in react, you could apply for angular jobs. Okay. That's, that's very how, like, that's how different I like, like you're going to have things like GraphQL or NGRX or, you know, they're MobX or Redux. Like the, you're going to have pieces that you have to learn no matter where you go. The chances of you having an exact stack match with your skill set is like zero. So don't worry about that at all. Be confident. You'll do awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. This was really yeah. useful. Yeah. Um, I got a, uh, yeah. So, sorry, this um, I don't know about everybody in here, but like I'm, I'm kind of coming into this, and I'm a little bit older. I'm heading toward forty, so like as an older person coming into this, and I come back from the engineering background, but mine's more like building skyscrapers and houses than it is awesome. building technical stuff in computers. So like how <laughs> for interviewing process, and I, and I see a question that also says building a resume. So for me, it, it's a career change for sure. Yeah. And uh, the changing of it from coming from a completely different background, an older person heading, you know, toward like, I'd try to be set in a career at this point, but I'm just changing. So I guess some pointers of being like, you know, how, like, what would you look at and say, okay, this guy or this, this woman is older, but they have the technical background or whatever, like just anything on that terms, I guess. Yeah. I, I think you should lean into it, like lean into your lean into your rich background um having having a having a strong resume of of you know and work experience i think i think you should only feel um feel comp more confident um going into interviews i will say and this may be something i'll say to everybody um so something i did i did in 2021 i made a goal to meet someone new on linkedin every day meaning i set up zoom meetings with someone new every day so five days a week i met someone new if if i were you really anybody but especially um 
if you tell your story, if you have a chance to tell your story to five people every week, mm-hmm. somebody's going to know someone that says, Hey, this guy's cool. He's humble. He's scrappy, he works hard. And I think he's going to make a great engineer on a, on a good team. Like somebody's going to find something. So I would encourage that. And don't, you know, go embarrass yourself on LinkedIn, figuring out what DMs work, you know, slide into the DMs. <laughs> hey, hey, I want to, I, I want to chat and ask you some advice. Like that's what I did. And I've, that's how I've recruited my whole team. That's how we raised all our money. It came from those connections that I made in 2021. Oh, thank you very and much. And I still, yeah, go do it. Go embarrass yourself and you'll figure out what works. I um, will agree. Um, Oh, do we need higher education to get a salaried position? No. Let me tell you how many we- weeks of school I have I at college. About, about two. Um, in fact, most of my engineers don't. Have, even my senior engineers that make well, a deep six figures don't have a don't have a college degree. It. I think it does help. I. You know, it's interesting. You can just lean into lean into your strengths and just don't highlight your weaknesses. I think that's part of, that's just the game, right? Play the cards you've been playing, you, you have. Um, if you do have a, have a, you know, a four-year degree or a graduate degree, lean into that. Um, but if you don't, just don't call attention to it because you'll be fine. Um, so, and honestly, any job posting you see that says higher, four-year degree, my first job said you need a four-year degree. If you, if you are a strong candidate and um, they, it, they won't care. Um, one thing that I'm just remembering about something that's, um, that the company that picked me up first or the, the first company I worked for told me some positive feedback about why, why my resume kind of shifted to the top is it was an attractive resume. Like it, I, I found one, um, I found a template on, have you guys heard of Envato? I'll type this in right here. This, this is, envatoelements.com. I still use them all the time. I've been using them for probably six years on different projects, but Envato Elements, I found a resume template. Um, and a lot of them you have to use Adobe, but that's okay. Um, you can get an Adobe Cloud subscription for like 30 bucks a month. Um, you can even cancel it after you do this, but um, Envato Elements, I found um, it, it just looked attractive. And so they were like, oh, she probably designs good UI because her resume is attractive. Anyway, um, yeah, don't, don't worry about the four-year degree thing. Are there positions you would want to avoid as a junior? That is a great question. Um, so the first job you get is going to set the direction for your career. And I would say the two, and, and really any experience is better than no experience, but they're, um, all experience is not created equal. What I would recommend is you want to be on a, you want to be on an engineering team working on a SaaS product. You do not want to be at a dev shop if you can avoid it. Um, Dev shop, what I mean by dev shop is like a custom software shop, somebody that builds websites or, and that's fine. Like my sister started there and now she's making her six figures at 23. Like she's doing great. Um, She started a dev shop. But it is a lot, um, just the quality of experience um, is, is a little bit greater if you're working on a, on a SaaS platform, working on an application on, with a senior team versus we're getting a new website for a brand coming in, and go pump out some HTML and CSS, right? Um, you're going to learn architecture and how to work on you know, you're going to learn about scalability and, and how to collaborate with a product team and a UX team. Um, so I would look, um, yeah, as far as what positions to avoid, I mean, any experience and your, your financial situation, how much you can, how long you can wait for that dream job is going to depend on a couple factors, but, um, anyway, that those are my thoughts there. Just really try to go try to find a SaaS company. Okay, this is a really crazy idea. And some of this may be, this is something I've gotten a lot of flack for, but um, I've seen it work. 
I've seen it work for a lot of people. It worked for my sister and it worked for three of our three of our three engineers that I actually brought on to wander. Um, they, we had three, okay, this is what I would do. If I was an engineer, a junior engineer today, I would start networking like crazy on LinkedIn. And I would reach out to a bunch of engineering managers, maybe CTOs at smaller companies, um, even senior engineers, team leads. And I'd say, hey, I'm just finishing my boot camp. Can I sit in on, I'm, I'm, start, I'm really trying to learn more about what life will be like and figure out what kind of teams and things I want to be working on as I'm looking for, for my first job. Can I sit in on one of your sprint plannings this month? Can I sit in on an architecture discussion? Hey, can I meet with you and can I shadow you for a day? And then what you do is you say, hey, could I work for you guys very part-time, 10 hours a week, you don't have to pay me anything. Can I do that for a month? 10 hours a week, you can keep a day job if you're gonna have a day job. Can I just asynchronously, I will carve out the times, you know, the times during the week that I need to sync with you. I will, you know, if I have a day job, I'll make sure that during lunch I can sync with you or I can I can make it to sprint planning, et cetera. Um, not everybody can do that. I didn't do that. Um, I was getting married and my husband was in school. I couldn't do that. But if you're in a position to do that, um, I networking and, and just asking to observe, making, just make a couple friends and then ask, ask to observe or shadow for, for an hour, for a day, come into the office with them. And um, yeah, self-induced internship. Yep. Go be awkward and be like, embarrass yourself. Um, in order, one of my favorite quotes is um, in order to, to, um, in order to be great, you have to risk being embarrassed. Um, and that's true. You should see some of my cold messages I've sent. I'm embarrassed. I'm, they're going to come out someday and, and bite me in a big way. But um, what are some other resources you guys use for LinkedIn? Um, or for linking in with future developers? I live in Texas and want to meet up with people with like-minded creativity. Hmm. I don't know. I, I LinkedIn is where I go. Um, you can actually search on LinkedIn by location, um, but I don't know. I'd, I'd be interested to hear if anybody has um, any thoughts. Um, meetup groups, yeah, hackathons, yeah. Um, how important is a cover letter to you? Um, when we, I don't know. Mostly, it's a balance, right? Because as a hire as a hiring manager i just want to know that i just want i'm looking for culture fit and um in aligned incentives um a portfolio website um portfolio website i think it depends on the position you're going for but um, i mean if you're looking for a side you know pr what would be really impressive is if you built a full on web app with some cool like each tab was a Oh, this would be cool. If uh, I'm just thinking of what would impress me, but um, if if there was a, a web app that you built, deployed everything by yourself, and each tab was like a mini web app, so you could have like a mortgage calculator on one, or like a weather API search on one, or um, you really wanted to impress Wander, you'd put a Mapbox widget and build a build an interactive map on on one of your pages. Maybe it would it synced with a certain API and pulled data dynamically or something. But, but yeah, I think, um, and to be honest, the, your portfolio website is something easy you could share on LinkedIn with potential employers. It's just a link and say, hey, I, have, I went pretty hard on my portfolio. Will you give me some feedback? Or, hey, I have a lot of mini web apps on here and I, I want to, yeah, I want to showcase myself and whatever. But um, okay. Anyway, be creative in your job search because just just applying, I mean, it works, but most most of the time people people uh, like just find ways to make yourself different. Okay, guys, we have a couple more minutes left. Um, do we got three more, at least three more questions for AJ? Um, I got one question. Are there any websites like Code Wars or Leak Code or any of those types of sites that are not only for practicing your code, but like 
that also might potentially help employers figure out, hey, this is what that guy can do before even reaching out. Like anything like that? I don't know. I don't use, I don't use any of the, any of those to find people. Um, I'm not familiar with those. Oh, sorry. Okay. I can't well, they're more that. for like practicing anyway. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank I'm you. I'm sure that they're helpful. Yeah. Um, oh, how long? Um, the way I got my job was a little bit unique. I'm just going to say it didn't take, it was, it was fairly quick, but I had a friend, I had a friend working at a company. Um, she actually, she's not an engineer or anything, but she went in and knocked on the CEO's door and said, will you interview my friend? And they ended up hiring me. So yeah, I, my sister got her first job by, um, she worked for free for a startup. Um, and she, hers was, she was about six months after, after she graduated, but yeah, connections are, um, trying to think if there are any specific people, um, people really want to help. Like there are so many people that have soft spots for junior engineers. Engineers like to help people, you know, so yeah, go meet some people. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, AJ. Uh, definitely a wealth of information. And um, no, th thank you so much. And yeah. uh, uh, just a reminder, yeah. guys, this is recorded and will go up on the Bottega website afterwards. Um, so you can access it there. So uh, I highly recommend that because of all the information that she provided, how helpful it was. Awesome. But no, thank you again, AJ. Yeah, thank you. Good luck, everybody. Go connect. Um, you can connect with me on LinkedIn and feel free to feel free to reach out. I'm kind of horrible with responding to DMs a lot of times, but I will do my best. And I wish you guys all the best of luck. Keep keep at it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, AJ. Good night. All right. Thank you all.